Hi, welcome to Desi Plaza. So uh, today I do have uh, three attorneys with me, Caitlin and Kavita Garu and Meenu over here. So uh, I just want to understand what is uh, the H4 revocation impact, uh, what impact would it have it on the economy, American economy? So can I have your opinions? I want to say one word here, uh, taxes, uh, economy, everything. We have so many people on this uh, this H4 EAD that just re revoking it and removing these work opportunities for these people is going to leave the economy very devastated as far as taxes and just just economic um, uh, failure there. I do agree with Caitlin Nikara. I mean, uh, definitely revoking the H4 EAD completely. And we have to understand, I don't, uh, the H4 EAD, not every H4 is getting an EAD. Only a select section of people who have, uh, who are, who meets a certain eligibility criteria get the H4 EAD. So I don't understand why there is so much against this uh, program itself. Um, and as, as Caitlin said, the biggest is obviously there are a lot of uh, employers who are employing H4 EADs. It, uh, it does reduce some household spending uh, limit you know now they have two uh, earning fa family now they will become one earning family it will affect uh, the general economy let it be shopping let it be taxes everything will get it let it be I, I think real estate in a way also will get affected if uh, they take out that um, earning from a household well, I echo whatever my friends have said. It's not going to have a very good effect in economy. Number one, real estate, of course. You know, when you have two earning members in the family, you in the first thing at least we Asians invest in is real estate. Uh, second is H4 uh, dependents do not get to work right away. They wait years before they get to work. I do not think it's fair to them because they're so highly qualified. As far as the clients I deal with, I, I find out that they are they're really qualified. They add up to American economy and and the culture as well. When you have so many educated people in mathematics, science, you know, uh, whether being teachers, you know, they, they invest so much in that. And then you have so much taxable income. Them staying at home doesn't help America at all. We need to support H4 EADs. We need to take step for them to uh, go away. So we'll do whatever in our capacity to have the H4 EADs going. Yeah, I'm just going to give my opinion. I don't think, um, you know, government is going to take it away. It, for, not because there's going to be huge objections. I think they're smart. They know that this uh, project is bringing them money. It is. It could be political reasons that they're creating such a huge and cry because some promises were made at the time of the election. They are definitely making it difficult. In my opinion, I don't think it's going to go away. If it is, it's going to. There's going to be a big fight from our community. I don't agree with Minu on this because I do feel like this is going towards revocation because they have ten, they have taken the first step of making this more concrete by submitting the draft. So I do believe because uh, again, it's not that if an next administration comes, is it going to change? It could change, but as we are sitting in the current administration, I do feel that it is pretty close to getting revoked. I'll have to agree um, here is that it's likely going to be revoked, however, um, that could change. So with, with anything, we have we have a current administration that is heavily against this this type of benefit, uh, but in, in the future we could definitely see it come back. Um, but it, it depends on voices, right? So if we sit idly at home and we let things happen without voicing opinions, writing letters to our representatives, um, nothing's going to be, be done. So um, anybody here, they, they need to to voice their opinions and and make make things heard. And why do you why do you think is like uh, they they are actually stressing on this H four EAD at this point of time? Uh. It is. I was just talking to somebody about this. There is definitely more a skill skill set in H four EAD, and the fear is there's a lot of skilled work which has been taken away by the H four EADs, right? But stats, uh, but as far as stats, if you go. Uh, it doesn't say that the H4EAD... No stats say that. No stats say that. But that's the current feeling in the common people, right? And the government is actually fueling that uh, thought process, right? So we have a government which is actually building an invisible wall on legal immigration, you know? I'm not talking about illegal immigration. On any kind of legal immigration, we are seeing so much pushback from the administration. It's almost like their intent is to deter people to immigrate to this country.
right? That's how every program, like citizenship in Dallas is taking over 12 years to get, right? So the time frames, the delays, everything, you know, adds up to a single intent, uh, which was very evident in the Baja executive order by President Trump when he signed it in 2017, right? Uh, so that's what everything, you know, is boiling down to, uh, creating this deterrence where people, uh, like somebody was saying, right? A lot of students are hesitating to come to United States now because of what is happening, what is, you know, uh, the enforcement, let it be, or whatever it is. So that is why my uh, opinion is, Let's take the advantage of all the programs, which are their great programs. H-1B is a great program, OPT, OPT STEM, they're all great programs. If we take advantage of it in a proper manner, let them come to your offices, let them do a site visit. Why worry is my stance. And, and what, what, do you, what, what do you think would happen to already approved uh, the H-4EADs or which are in the process of getting approved? Or what will happen to those? As I said earlier, I think the EADs are not just going to get revoked. So if you have a valid EAD, I think you can continue working unless specifically the rules do come out and say that we are going to revoke every H-1 we have already approved, right? Which I don't think hap will happen. The current EAD, whichever you have, will be valid until it runs out. You will not be able to file an extension probably on the uh, EAD. And, and there's one thing, uh, why is it like only uh, the I-140 approved H-4 EADs can work? And That's the eligibility criteria they created. L2 EADs, yes. Yeah. You have to look at the number, the number, the number of L1s coming in versus the number of H1 coming is humongous. So I do think that there is a good thing because that shows that the H1 has made a commitment to stay in this country for longer term by filing an immigrant petition. So their intent is to immigrate to this country. So it does make for me a sense to only give EADs for people who may want to make a permanent home in the United States. And, and, and uh, one thing regarding this uh, new petition I I five three nine A, which is which has been uh, it will be published in March eleventh. So an additional document, a biometric. Edition. Yeah, five thirty nine A. How, how is this going to impact uh, the H four or H <laughs> It won't impact anything. More or more information to be given. Uh, more fees to be paid. Um, uh, that's pretty much it. It's becoming more tedious, so I would recommend people not to just go ahead and file that themselves because they, uh, we don't know how it's going to look. We don't know what information it's going to ask, but we do know that it's going to be two sets of in, uh, documents, 539 itself and a 539A, which is more a biographical page. So we don't know what information. We have not seen the draft. Uh, there is a worry that the day it is released is the day it is going to be effective. Uh, my belief is Ella came out and said that if that happens, they probably will litigate it because that doesn't give that enough time for people to know what is in there. If there's a error or if there's a question or anything, they don't give us enough time to comment on it. And, and one, one last thing, this is an, a totally out of box uh, to this particular thing. So is it possible for an uh, H4, uh, H4 who is over here who can work back in India and take a paycheck over there? Yeah, that, I don't think that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because they do have Indian citizenship or whatever. You know, I'm assuming that we are talking about an Indian citizen. They have citizenship. They have a right to work out there, get money out there. Uh, but as an H4, I just need to make sure that they understand the taxable. Uh, you know, what are the tax consequences of receiving revenue out in a foreign country while they're staying in United States? So that's something they need to talk to their tax professional. But uh, there is no stopping for them. To to work in outside of United States. They are not authorized to work within United States, but not outside United States. Thank you.